Hi, this is Tiffany Secard with Home Key Mortgage, and you're listening to Local Leaders, the podcast. Every business owner has a story. Let Jim Chapman tell yours. Hi, it's Tricia Johnston, Residential Realtor with Ladder and Bloom with your Real Estate Tip of the Week. Today I'm talking about how to make moving day less stressful for your pets. If you're moving locally, have them stay with a family member, friend, or in a kennel to keep them away from the activity. If you're moving long distance, take them in the vehicle with you and bring their bed, blanket, kennel cage, harness, whatever you need to have to keep them safe and comfortable on the drive. When you get to your new home, set up their space right away with their bed, blanket, toys, food and water dish, all the things they're familiar with so that the new place won't be so scary. Also make sure you keep them away from the commotion at the new house so if people are carrying in furniture and boxes, keep them in a quieter area away from all of that. Also make sure that you notify your vet. So if you're moving locally, just give them your new address. If you're moving long distance, you'll want to take their pet records with you to give to their new vet. And if your pet is microchipped, make sure you notify the microchip company right away if you have a new address, new phone number, because in an unfamiliar area, it's highly likely that your pet, if they get lost, will not be able to find their way home. So the microchip company needs to be able to know how to get in touch with you. If you have any questions at all about this or anything else real estate, I'll be happy to help you. Just give me a call. I'm Tricia Johnston with Ladder and Bloom, and I'll be back here next week with another real estate tip for you. If many of you are like me, the daily task of checking the mail can almost get to the point of aggravating. You reach in the mailbox, pull out a stack of mail as thick as a phone book, and as you sift through the endless flyers and ads, you find two pieces of mail that may actually be useful. There is one exception to this for me and probably for you. And if you've lived in Livingston Parish since 2013, you may recognize this. So this is Go Pages magazine. (laughs) Go Pages is my exception to your average junk mail. It contains valuable coupons to some of the best local businesses in the Livingston Parish area, and owner Michael Joyce is here to tell us all about that and a whole lot more. So with that, welcome, Michael, to Local Leaders of the Podcast. Good morning. I'm, ple- I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to have you yeah, here. Absolutely. I'm a big fan of your your uh, circular, I guess you'd call it, uh, it's magazine. A direct Mail Magazine. There you go. So before we jump into your Direct Mail Magazine, I want to give everyone a little history on you. You're a father of two high school daughters? Yes, I have uh, two beautiful daughters that go to Live Oak, uh, sophomore and senior that's coming up here. Live Oak. Live Oak a, Eagles. The Eagles. The Eagles. The Eagles. I'm not going to say go Jackets on that's this all right. that's episode. All right. <laughs> so as far as hobbies, you're an outdoor guy, right? Pretty much. Um, if it involves being outside, I'm there. Uh, it started a long time ago when I was a kid, wandered off in the woods. My parents were like, where is he? And they point over there. Um, <laughs> you know, fishing, hunting, golf, landscape. It's, it's kind of grew up in that. Um, I like to cook. Yeah. You know, I uh, read, uh, continue to learn that kind of stuff. But if it involves outside, I want to be there. Awesome. So, sure. yeah, you're a Louisiana guy, it sounds like. Heat don't bother you. You want to get out there and fish well, and I do all know, I don't know about the heat. This week's been pretty rough. Oh, it has, man. It's yeah. been extremely hot this week. Uh, so, I'm an outdoors guy, too. Love to be in the outdoors. And and uh, golfing is, is my thing. I love to golf, but I don't have any time for it. Uh, hoping to get – crank back up in that soon i'll take a little hiatus from that yeah yeah so uh salespeople know salespeople michael yes um from the time i met you several years ago i knew you were a sales guy you got a very early start on your sales career actually at the age of 10 at the age of 10 so you were a young buck tell me about all that man it was uh my father uh, he was one of the co-creators of um there was a there was if you go to the coin op car washes, which by the way are beginning to go away. But you go to the coin op car washes. Uh, there used to be a big yellow box, <clears throat> and it was called Car Fresh, and this is where you go. You put your coins in there and you spray cherry or 
vanilla leather or whatever scent into your car, right? Well, it yeah. used to be a big box. And um, they were, like I said, my father was one of the co-founders, and they were promoting this product at the uh, conventions around the country. And at the time, um, I was small enough where I could get inside and actually work on the pumps, the pneumatics part of the pumps. Yeah. So their stick was, look, here's a 10-year-old kid that can fix this. That's how simple the process, how the motoring and all the valves and everything work. This 10-year-old kid could do it. So they would take me to these shows in Vegas, Chicago, Atlanta, wherever, yeah. Dallas, Houston, and uh, I'd be part of their show. I guess I was the I was the, oh, I was the pretty, monkey kind of guy. You know? idea. So I'd crawl up in there and show them how easy it was to fix the stuff. So yeah, um, yeah, you know, that that's when it really started for me. Yeah, and you learned, I'm sure, valuable lessons in sales at that age that you didn't even realize you were learning. I didn't even know I was doing it. You know, yeah. I was just showing them. You know, it was a matter of uh, just being there and, and and learning from the people. I mean, obviously, the gentlemen that were there with my father and and the other people, you pick up things. So yeah. Yeah, no doubt about it. So eventually, you know, way beyond that, it led you to the world of pharmaceutical sales, Indeed. right? I started, I guess, um, it was around 85. Yeah. And um, was uh, was in that mark, was in that field for quite some time. Uh, actually moved to New Orleans in 91 uh, to uh, help resurrect the company that was pretty much going by the wayside yeah and was stayed in that market for a while and um learned a le- learned an interesting lesson in that uh, what was happening in the pharmaceutical industry around you know early 2000s and uh and uh, left that field in the yellow pages yeah you know? yeah well before we leave your field of pharmaceutical a competitive market right that's very much uh pharmaceutical sales is is but you know you got to be on the top of your game to be a pharmaceutical sales rep. Got to be a pretty sharp person, male or female. Uh, Correct. And uh, and certainly competitive. So I would imagine you know that further honed your sales skills, and some of that's just natural. I I get asked all the time, you know, are salesmen born or are they made? I I think that you can train anybody to be a salesperson, but to be at the at the top of a sales profession, you, you, there's something there that I don't think you can kind of teach. I think people are kind of born with it. You know, it's it's it, I guess it's the development of your surroundings as you're growing up. You know, you mm-hmm. uh, I don't believe you're born with a back in the day a briefcase. You know, yeah, uh, just like Michael Jordan wasn't born with a basketball in his hand. That's so right. You it helps if you're an extrovert. You yeah. know, um, you know, there's a confidence if you, you know, typically if you're playing sports and, and you're involved in team type of endeavors, it, it helps and, and it kind of builds a, a mentality for you. Sure. Um, the key to it to me, though, is helping people. You know, yeah. you, you, need, you need to have that in your heart and, and in your gut. hundred percent. Yeah. That's a good point, man. Yeah. That's a good point. And, and uh, you know, I, I know some pretty successful salespeople that they don't like the term salesperson. They like the term problem solver, and Absolutely. and uh, I like it too. And that is the way I look at it, and it's what you do. I mean, you're, you know, you're working with small businesses now, and even uh, you know, bigger than small businesses, and uh, and you're solving some sort of problem they have. Maybe maybe they're trying to get more people in their door, and you're bringing right. them an option to do that. So uh, I fully believe that. We all, as salespeople, are problem solvers in the end. William Waldrop of TWFG Insurance in Denham Springs can service all of your insurance needs. Offering auto, life, health, and commercial insurance, William Waldrop of TWFG Insurance is a proud supporter of Local Leaders, the podcast. Um, now, in 2002, you did work for the Yellow Pages, as you mentioned. Another highly competitive field, very, right? Very, very, much so. Uh, how valuable was your pharmaceutical sales experience, you know, <laughs> when you took that job with Yellow Pages? Um, interestingly enough, when I, I had taken a period of time off after the pharmaceutical industry you know, field. And I was looking for the right, the next position in that, in that, in that field. And, uh, it just, uh, you know, after about six months, I was like, yeah, I need to do something to stay sharp. And, and so I just interviewed with, uh, 
with uh, it's actually Sunshine Pages, an e-tail company. At the yeah, time. I remember that. <laughs> and yeah. um, e-tail, they actually after you know after I found this out after a little while, um, they were concerned about hiring me because the they didn't see pharmaceutical sales. It's more marketing, all right. They didn't see pharmaceutical sales as being what they were looking for in the day to day sales of. Yellow Pages, because it's yeah. a different, I mean, it's, it's different. The training is, is entirely different. Um, it's probably some of the best training that uh, any salesperson really ever get. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's very, very intense. As a matter of fact, later in my career with them, um, one of the tasks that I was uh, asked to do was to revamp the entire training process, because our training process was about two to three weeks, and then field work and then come back in. And yeah. so we had to, uh, that was one of the things that took, that, that took a while to yeah. revamp that for sure. I can imagine. And, you know, and that's a feather in your cap that when they task somebody with that, I'm sure it's somebody they believe in. It's somebody they know can, can uh, come up with a process mm-hmm. that may be better for uh, their business. And uh, so that was a feather in your cap there, especially when they, you know, originally they were struggling as to whether to hire you. <laughs> yeah, they started me as a, uh, I remember they started me as just an associate level rep. Um, and then um, after about three months, um, they promoted me to a senior level rep. Yeah. And um, and then started talking to me you know, after, after about a year, they started talking to me about other things, other positions, right? Right. And um, we had Katrina. Which we, we don't want to go into that, but yeah. um, you know, they transferred me from. I was working in a Beach Springs at the time, and they transferred me over here to work in the Baton Rouge market as a master level sales rep. And then um, I guess about six months later, they asked me if I wanted to manage the office. I'm like, okay, we can do that. And then about a year later, they asked me if I wanted to be a regional and cover everything from Lafayette to Hammond to Homa. And uh, so it was a. The ascent, I, I call it the ascension, I guess, is, is was pretty quick, pretty rapid. Gotcha. That company. And then I guess a couple of years after that, it was uh, uh, director of sales operations and marketing. So. Wow. So you you really just went up the ladder. And how long were you at Yellow Pages? Um, 11 years. 11 years. That's 11 a good years. stint. Yeah. I've yeah. worked the, in pharmaceuticals. I was there in that industry for 17 and then 11. So I'm not the guy that uh, – you know, I'm not the two year and out guy yeah. at all. You know, I, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to give it 100 percent. Absolutely. Well, and that kind of leads me to my next little topic, and that is at some point, you look, you were successful where you were at it at Yellow Pages. You know, I'm sure you were doing well monetarily and all of those sorts of things, and uh, even through all of that, at some point, you decided to go out on your own, right, and open your own business. Uh, I, I did. Um, I had been, you know, as we all know, Yellow Pages isn't the industry that it is that it was by any means. And, you know, I had started looking for options. You know, yeah. I guess probably around 2007, 2008, I'd really started looking at, okay, this isn't going to last forever. You mm-hmm. know, we could see the, the writing was on the wall. And, um, you know, I started looking and toying with – you know, what would be my next steps? You know, what would I want to do? And, and interesting, that um, <clears throat> one of the the last positions that I had there, uh, my responsibility was to um, find or create products that we could transition print revenue into digital revenue. Yeah. And I unco- actually uncovered this, this company in uh, Texas. And uh, they were a small independent directory company and they had started uh, closing down their print directories. I mean, if you remember, well, the, the, the yellow pages in Baton Rouge used to be about that thick. Oh right? yeah. And the one in Denham was about that thick. Well, the one yeah. we just got yeah. that they're required to do by the FCC yeah. is about like that. So, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's kind of the revenue is going away, but anyway, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. You know, when you think about it before you get, before you move on it, you started in 2002. So in 2002, the, the internet was around, but it was, in its infancy compared to where it is today. Correct. And so, uh, obviously, as time progresses, uh, you know, people just don't use the phone book like they used to. Um, you you want a phone number? What do you do? You Google it. That's what we all do. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, and uh, for those folks out there that are younger that might be listening 
Uh, phone books is how me and Michael used to find things. I mean, that's how, you know, we used road maps. We didn't have navigation phones. Uh, and so that from that aspect, um, you kind of saw that coming is what you say. You Pretty can kind of see the writing on the wall with that, that, hey, this stuff's all going online. And while Yellow Pages can go online, it's an extra step somebody has to take versus just Googling it. Right? Correct. So, exactly so yeah so uh so you found go pages I, I did i found uh i found the company that had uh created go pages okay and actually did a lot of research on them and um for from, for months actually and i was actually prepared to make a presentation to recommend that product mm -hmm. and my career um came to an abrupt end oh, okay. with, with the yellow pages. So, you know, I'm sitting there wondering, okay, because I've been thinking all along, I need to do something. I want to do something. I'm standing on the edge of the cliff, right? Right. And I actually got a foot in the rear. And yeah. so it's time to fly. And I had this book of research and picked up the phone, called them and said, hey, look, you know, let's talk about this. And I actually had a idea of, recreating it myself over here. Mm -hmm. And as I met with them and we talked in detail, they actually came to Baton Rouge. We spent all day, yeah, you know, and, and talking about things. It just made sense because the, the, they had at that point in time, they already had almost 10 years of experience with, you know, fine tuning the, the secret sauce of this, uh, of how the magazine works. Sure. Why recreate the wheel? It's not always necessary to recreate the wheel. So, you know, we, we sat down, we talked, and we came to an agree. You know, we, you know, we came to an, an, an agreement, actually an arrangement, and, um, you know, I, I actually went to uh, went to Flower Mound, which is just outside of Dallas, which is where they're located, and uh, met with them and signed on the dotted line. Marriage made in heaven at that point, pretty much. Though you you do do it right, you get you go you you're sold on the product. Uh, rather than reinvent the wheel, as you said, you say, hey, I've got some support already here. They've already done all this, uh, and I can just bring it to my community. You do that, and boom, now, you, now you've now you got a magazine with no advertisers. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you know, actually, the the, the um, once we decided on everything, got the territory defined and whatnot, um, they handed me a stack of the magazines that they had been publishing in Texas. Yeah. And um, I, I remember the fair, I remember the very first day, I went up 16, the north part of you know north of Watson, and I just started walk coming down the street, walking down the street, knocking on doors, introducing the idea, the concept, yeah. of what was going to happen. And um, you know, I think that first day, I probably saw 30, 35 people that first day. Wow, that's all, that's and, a good day um, of calls. And I set up. That was on a Monday, I, and and I I set up I think twelve appointments to present more in more detail. Yeah, because usually when I first go in there, all I'm doing is introducing the product. Yeah, you're giving information. Yeah, setting up an who appointment. you are and what yeah. you do. We're not. It, that's not a sales call at all. Yeah. And um, my first appointment uh, was on a Wednesday morning. That Wednesday, and uh, actually it was Tutti Fruity in Watson and yeah. uh, Rick Patel, and uh, we. Uh, we wrote it up. There you go. First customer. First customer. You're like, man, this is easy. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I don't know about easy, but yeah. yeah. It was, but it was fun, you know, because that's the cool thing about what, about the, one of the cool things about it is just you get to meet so many different people in the community. Yeah. Um, and you get to learn about so many different kinds of businesses. I mean, I may meet a yogurt shop owner and then, and then I may meet a, um, an automobile repair guy and then I may spend some time with a dentist and I may talk to a podcast person you yeah. know, and then I'm going to talk to a florist. Then I'm going to talk to a dry cleaner. So you, you get to learn all different kinds of businesses, the businesses themselves, but you also get to learn those people and how they, how they handle situations. Yeah. You know, yeah. And it sounds cool. like you have a genuine interest in people and their business. And so it's not, I just want to sell you something, no. you know, you're, you're forming relationships, yes, right? And, absolutely. And, uh, 
And we'll get into that a little later and how some of these relationships you've had for a long, long time, which to me, longevity always equals something's working, you know, <laughs> right? So, uh, so Tutti Frutti uh, went ahead and rolled the dice and went with, with Go Pages, and, and I'm sure we're very happy with that. Now, what is your territory? What, what territory do you cover? Um, the magazine is actually mailed to Denim Springs Watch and Walker zip codes, mm. uh, the 707-2606 and 85 zip codes uh, it spills a little into livingston but you know the the, the five four yeah um but uh that's pretty much the territory so if it's a business that, if it's a if it's a locally owned business or franchise it's in those market areas mm -hmm. you know they're obviously a potential client and sure. somebody that i want to work with or if they're serving that community yeah um, so i mean there's something i mean over the last number of years we have you know become more and more self-sufficient mm -hmm. you know, we don't need to go other places to get services or things that we need. Yeah. So, and that's continuing to develop and continuing to grow, which is great. Yeah. And it's phenomenal for us here. Um, but, uh, you know, if it's, if, if it's a locally owned business in, their, in those three zip codes or someone that's serving the populace in that market area, you know, that's, those are definitely those people you want to talk. Definitely. To. Definitely. Now, uh, how many, how many residences, I guess you could say, and businesses does this magazine roughly? Okay. Um, the magazine is mailed to 40,000 homes and businesses. So in those three zip codes, there's approximately 1,850 premise businesses. In other words, they have a front door, right? Mm -hmm. So they all get it. And then there's also approximately 22 to 2,400 home-based businesses, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So they're getting it as well. The remainder... So if you look at it this way, so there's 18, 1,850 businesses, and then the rest of it goes to residences. Gotcha. So the home-based businesses are getting it yeah. as well as, you know, as well as in their business. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. And that's a, and that's a good number of people seeing, you know, your ad, whatever that may be, mm -hmm. and and uh, and you getting your name out there with Go Pages. Now, Go Pages has their hands in a lot of things. Y'all do web design, digital marketing, but I think it's fair to say what they're known for most is their magazine, the Absolutely. Go Pages yeah. magazine. Now, what stands out to me most uh, is, as we discussed earlier, you have a good bit of folks in here that you could have picked up this magazine in 2013 and looked through it. And probably 50% of the people in here were in here in 2013. You know, that yep. when I look at success uh, in advertising, what I look for is what we would call re-ups. They're people who continue to advertise over and over again with the same business. BJ Pawn and Gun in Denham Springs wants to buy your unwanted gold jewelry, gold coins, and gold bullion. With 30 years of experience operating in the Livingston Parish area, BJ Pawn wants to be your source when selling your gold. So stop by BJ Pawn today for a no obligation offer. BJ Pawn, a proud sponsor of local leaders. Um, so, uh, you know, there was a time when I worked for another company that, uh, as cheap as they were, uh, when it came to advertising, I was trying to push and get them to do some local advertising. And that was one of the things I looked for when, when I met with Michael was, well, how many people have been in here since 2013, since 2016? You know, pick a pick a date. Um, and I was blown away because he actually has a magazine from it was either his first printing or one of his first printings. Um, and he was like, "Look, here's you know this this company way back then. Here's this company today." Correct. And they never stopped. So if something never stops, it's working. So if you, if you have a question on advertising uh, with GoPages and whether it works, let Michael show you. He can actually pull those magazines out. Now, another thing I'll say is coupon advertising, in my opinion, is probably the best advertising you could ever do. Why? Because it's the easiest way to prove if it's working. Something comes back to you. It I, you know You know that somebody saw it and wanted to use it with your establishment and you're getting it back. So you can track it, I guess will be another word better than any other way. There's some other ways to track other forms of advertising, uh, you know, online with clicks and things like that. But, uh, when you get a coupon back, you, <laughs> that person spent money, right? They came in and they spent money. That's correct. And so that's, that's more valuable than a click. 
to me. Um, so, so now another thing I'll say with your market uh, being what it is, this is Livingston Parish has grown since 2013, has it not? Most definitely. <laughs> actually, um, the the Livingston Parish and a few other areas in the state have been on the radar for the fastest developing, fastest, grow, fastest growing areas of Louisiana for a very long time. And actually, they rank nationally as well. So it's uh, it's continuing. It, it was on a fast pace. We had a little setback in 16, which we don't want to talk about that too much. But, <laughs> you know, it's continuing. To, it's roaring back. And, yeah. and, I mean, look at just – if you just look at the number of new rooftops, mm-hmm. that will tell you what's mm-hmm. happening. That's right. And look, retail sales. I talked to the mayor of Denham Springs just the other day, and uh, you know, tax do- tax sales tax dollars are way up yes. right now, twenty something percent mm-hmm. uh, over last year. Which which I know we're all thinking, well, they had COVID last year, but oh no, sales taxes were up even last year during COVID. So. Um, that's kind of an example there of, of the growth of this parish. So, man, you made you made kind of the right moves at the right time. You came in in 2013 when when uh, Livingston Parish was really kind of taken off, and so those businesses were coming here, which I would imagine is a lifeblood of your business. You've got to have businesses coming in all the time, right? And and growth very important. Absolutely. I mean, you know, the, obviously a new business coming into the market area, they need to create awareness. They need to create a buzz for their, you know, for their message, what, which, whatever type of business it may be. So, um, you know, they're obviously someone that I'm interested in, in, in helping. But at the same time, um, their business has been here for a very, very long time. Yeah. And they're actually, I can remember in the, very, in the first edition that I did, uh, there were some clients that uh, obviously had been here for quite some time. And I remember having the conversation with them after the fact of, Customers coming in saying, "Man, I forgot y'all were here." Yeah, you know, and, and being in the magazine just kind of opened their eyes and gave them like a little shot to, you know, "Hey, look, we haven't gone anywhere. We're still here. You might not remember us, but we're here." And so it's not just new businesses, but yes, they're definitely a lifeblood. Yeah, and and you and I have uh, have talked about uh, in the past the you know from a business owner's perspective, obviously business owners want to cut costs where they can, and and some of these folks were on a tight budget to and some of them are just tight in general <laughs> and uh and so uh you know advertising sometimes plays on on the wrong side of that equation they they think that's where they should cut or or whatever because it's kind of a controllable expense versus like labor which is, you can control somewhat but not a whole lot you got to have people working um, but all of that being said, uh, you said something to me that really stuck out and that, and that was with regard to when business is good, you need to advertise when business is bad, you need to advertise kind of expand on that. Yeah. Part. Um, the saying is that when, when business is good, advertising is a good idea, but when business is bad, advertising is a must. Yeah. The, 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 the point of adver- uh, the point of effective advertising, let's use that word, right? The point of effective advertising is you want to reach as many people as you can with your message. You want to reach them regularly, and you also want to reach them at the appropriate time, which is part of our secret sauce to the magazine. Um, you, it, it, if, you're, if your business is struggling, and that's because of, we'll say, the majority of the time, that's because of reduced revenues, right? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Where does revenue come from? Revenue comes sales. from sales, from, yeah. and that comes from consumers and customers, whether they be existing clientele or whether that be new clientele. And, again, it depends on your particular product. If you're selling appliances, obviously the, the buying cycle of a consumer is going to be a little bit longer or it's going to be an emergency need as opposed to a restaurant, right? We're agreed. You know, restaurant, the most common asked question in any household is where are we going to eat? You know? Yeah. So um, it it, it – it, it, everything is independent of you know the, of each business, but the point of that is, it's a matter of continuing to deliver your message to the masses, to the consumer. And the cool thing about this magazine is, um, it comes about out every about every five and a half to six weeks, so you can change your message. Um, but unlike other magazines, um, it's not editorial in nature. Therefore, uh, it's a shopping guide. Mm. And I've had advertisers tell me that that 
you know, their clients, a, a lady will walk in and she'll pull the whole magazine out of her purse. And, and so it's not something that's, that's looked at and read and then set to the side. It's mm. something that's, that's continued to be utilized and continue to be referenced until the new magazine comes out. It has a new fresh look with new advertisers and, and, you know, the things that we do to it. So Yes, I agree. And- From humble beginnings in 1989, Big Mike's has long been a place for friends and family to gather for lunch, dinner, and drinks. Big Mike, Jocelyn, and their friendly staff invite you to come in and relax in one of their spacious dining areas or watch a game on one of the big screen TVs. Big Mike's is a place to meet old friends or make new ones. Big Mike's offers daily and nightly specials, and they specialize in serving up delicious and fresh menu items. Big Mike's offers a catering menu for large groups and has private party rooms for up to 100 guests. Whether you're planning a quick lunch or a large family dinner or just a night out with friends, Big Mike welcomes you to experience a great time. And don't forget to grab some t-shirts, caps, or koozies in the gift shop. Oh, or a bottle of Big Mike's Honey Dijon. It's delicious. Big Mike's Sports Bar and Grill. We're kind of a big deal. Release it every six weeks. So if you want to revamp it at some point, change your artwork a little bit, we can do that. The advantage to that, folks, is is if you do two or three issues and and it's just not hitting, maybe there's something with that artwork that you can change, or maybe another off a different okay. offer, something like that. Those are important. That's an important key that you can change that. Once you commit, you know, it doesn't mean you have to commit to the buy one, get one free concept or no. whatever. You can go to a percentage off or right. Michael will work with you on all those things. And I can tell you, we've sat down in here. I run an ad in here for my podcast rental side in this go pages. So I'm not talking out the other side <laughs> of my mouth or anything. Um, but I believe in the magazine. That's why I invested in it. And, and all of that is an investment from your business. And, um, and I'll tell you that, uh, you know, I asked that question, what, what, what are my options if, if I want to, you know, make a change of some sort, the great thing about Michael is he'll sit down and talk to you and he's got the experience behind him. He knows, well, thank you. you know, he can't, obviously nobody can guarantee something's going to work a hundred percent of the time, but what he can do is he can use experience, his experience to, uh, walk you through that process and tell you, uh, you know, what he feels and his many years of experience will be the best way to go and the best way to start. True. I mean, the other thing that I try that I try to, a lot of the delivery of this is based around holidays. So mm-hmm. seasonality of different businesses changes, different things are needing to be promoted. And we try and sit down and, and I'll try and sit down with you and have a roadmap so that it's not on you. I want to know, okay, this is what we need to be focusing on. So when I come to see you, I'm bringing the idea to you. I'm not just walking in the door going, what do you think we ought to do? Yeah. Right. So no, I want to, I you know what, you know, you run a podcast studio, right? Right. So that's what you do. Mm-hmm. And that's what you're, that's what you excel at. Yeah. And let me, I'll, I'll bring you the ideas and I might be, I'm not saying I'm right all the time by any stretch of the imagination. So, I mean, we'll throw things against the wall, see what sticks if you like it great you know let's try it but at the same time we'll find you know we'll find you know and it we'll find things that work the yeah. best and and they'll be your anchor promotion but then you also use the other promotions to introduce new ideas and other products that you have that you want to sell more of agree so you know depending on again depending on the business and the custom needs of each business we'll we kind of lay that kind of lay that out for you and and um you know, I take a consultative, consultative approach to where I'm bringing ideas to you. I'm not just sitting there letting you, you know, you, we, we take everything and I disappear. Right. And, and then I come back and see you when it's time to re-up. No, no, yeah. no. And you own the company. So you're, yes. from from my standpoint, I'm dealing with the owner. And in his mind, or in my mind, I know that all he wants to do is see this work. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, yeah. He's not someone that's punching out at five o'clock, going home, and, and <laughs> oh no, you know. those days are long gone. <laughs> yeah, so so uh, that's that's an, a distinct advantage as well, especially to working with maybe larger 
companies that sell advertising that it's not the owner sitting in front of you. You know, it's one of 4,000 reps that are going around to you, and they don't really have any skin in the game. Right. Uh, My thing is, I mean, and, and just to add on to that, I live here, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm vested in this community. Kids go to uh, school here. Kids go to school here. Mm-hmm. I like to support, you know, the, the various and sundry things that are going on. And I, I, I like this community. Um, I picked it for a number of reasons, but you know, the, the, the fact that it's, it just feels good to be here. So I want to see the people that are doing business here develop and continue to grow and this thing continue to get bigger and bigger. And, um, Absolutely. you know, the magazine growth and, and the success of that is a, is a byproduct technically, you know? Yeah, it really is. And, and how does it make you feel, Michael? Cause I'm sure you've been in the position where someone's just starting out their brand new business. They don't have, you know, they were where you were, when you started Go Pages and you have literally helped them grow to the point that they're, maybe they're a staple now and they're just rocking and rolling in their business and you played a part in that. And, and uh, I mean, I'm sure that makes you feel like, wow, man, I really helped these people. It does. I mean, uh, try and be as generous as possible and, and try to try to help as many people as can. I'll never take credit for it. No. Absolutely not. No, uh, but it's all them. They they did it all. Yeah, I was just I was just basically a medium for their delivery. Yeah, but an important one. And Thanks. and uh, I appreciate in that. my opinion. Um, now, who would you consider your best prospects? The ones you say would you would think would benefit the most from Go Pages? Are there are there any that are, you know, you see that that business announced through the chamber or something, and it's it's a company, and it's like oh, they do so good with coupon advertising. You know, having been in marketing for as long as I have, I'm, I, I'm driving down the road, I'm seeing yard signs, I'm seeing a truck, I'm seeing, and my brain is constantly mm. functioning. You know, so I'm taking down leads and doing so. But as far as um, if you're are you asking for the, the, the best referrals, I guess? Or yeah, well, th- that, but also the businesses that, you know, like uh, I would think standing on the outside looking in that restaurants are always great for a magazine like this. Restaurants are your dr- are the driving force of this magazine. Yeah. I mean, if you every time the, what I want to do when I lay this magazine out and create it is I want every time you turn a page, I want you to see a food source. Yeah, you know, a, or a food source, a restaurant, or an eatery of some fashion. So, because I want to take that, I want to take the consumer from the front page to the back page, or from the back page to the front page. Because it's about a flip of a coin whether people start in the back or people start in the front. But sure. But so every time you turn the page, you're going to see an eatery of some fashion. Yeah. Yeah, and that's there. You go. That's another way that you plan. Yes. And uh, and you know, but it, anybody out there that doesn't have an eatery. Doesn't mean uh, you, you don't see tons of success in Go Pages. I mean, I'm I'm flipping through here right now, and we got BJ Point on here, long time advertiser yep. with you, absolutely. Uh, Jeremy and those folks are great over there. They also uh, sponsor our podcast, and we <laughs> very much appreciate it. Uh, but BJ Pawn is a good example. I mean, it's a pawn shop. Uh, they, I'm sure they get coupons back. Uh, you know, daily from, from go pages magazine, you got tire companies in here. You've got coin shops in here. Coin shops. Chuck March of five, shout out to you, brother. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got uh garage dorm repair places, furniture places. So I'm just flipping through here, folks, just to give you an idea. We've even got lawn care companies in here. Uh, total, total lawn care and landscaping. Right. Shout out to them. Uh, so there's tons, tons of uh, dentist office, Dentist office in here, orthodontist, or, orthodontist, AC companies, yeah, florists. I mean, yeah. it's 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 not limited to um, you know any particular group, no, so to speak. I mean, if it's a, there's some that it's less of a fit than others. Sure, and 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 honestly, I will be the first one to tell you when I sit down with you. Yeah. If I sit down with you and it's just not a fit for your needs, desires, or what you're trying to work with your company. If it can't, if it's not a fit for you, I'm going to be the one to tell you. Well, and you know what? That's, that's integrity because uh, some people would just jump on, Hey, that, that's another sale. Right. And right. if it works, it works. If it don't know well, uh, but my, Michael is going to be honest with you and tell you, I just don't see you fitting in there. And sometimes you just try it. And, and uh, you know, one way or the other, you're going to find out. Stephanie Berthelot and the crew at SR Enterprise can handle it all. From sheetrock 
to texture to paint. Give Stephanie a call at 504-432-9284. SR Enterprise, where they spread the paint and you spread the word. And well, the thing again, too, the thing is, even if you quote, just try it, you're creating awareness for your company. So it's yeah. still working, whether, whether they're, whether you have a stack of coupon redemptions or offer redemptions or whether you don't, it's, it's still being effective because you're still delivering your message and putting your company in front of potential customers. That's exactly right. And there's something to be said just for name recognition. Yes. And when you see something over and over again, mm-hmm. you know, eight times, uh, as the, as the, the literature all says, uh, eight times, then it kind of sticks in your mind. So right. if nothing else, uh, you know, you see that ad, eight times, you're going to remember that company. Yep. So uh, I agree with you there. Now, branding to me is one of the most, most important aspects of business. Branding is important. Your branding is really nice. Go pages. Uh, the company colors or, or the purple, uh, you know, LSU and, and hey, Denim High. I just let's like just, purple. Let's just say it. <laughs> and, and Michael likes purple. But you got a fl- nice Florida Lee up yep. there. Uh, which is obviously Louisiana, uh, Screams Louisiana, but you also assist your clients with branding. Y'all handle all the artwork and stuff like that uh, for these clients that maybe don't have that or they we do. they need assistance? We do. Um, we're, we're, we have uh, full service marketing capabilities. So we can do, we've actually done logo work for product launches for people. Uh, we have designed billboards for the people. I don't place them, yeah, but we've done the artwork for them. Sure, um, we've done artwork pieces for um, direct mail. I mean, outside of this, we have a card that we that we mail with the magazine. Mm-hmm. Um, there are people that don't want to do the volume of that, mm-hmm. so you know we have resources. Otherwise, sure, um, we do the we'll do that artwork as well, um, but. You know, in the magazine, the majority of what you see in there is our creations based on discovery meetings and conversations that we have, that I have with clients. There are a few that do their own artwork, and that's great. We welcome that. Sure, sure. Very good, though. That's, uh, you know, a a vast array of services is the point. Uh, It doesn't just stop at, okay, you want a magazine, we'll put you in the magazine and and, uh, send us all the, you know, they're going to hold your hand through all of that. And uh, make sure you get all your needs met. Uh, in your questionnaire, I asked you what the most difficult thing was to overcome when you started Go Pages, <laughs> and you stated getting out of my own way, stop researching and planning, and start implementing. Yep. I can't agree any more than you on that. And and this is what I'll say on that subject. You can plan yourself out of business. <laughs> no doubt. Right? Um, no doubt. I've worked around some people in my lifetime that have spent that were the best planners in the world. Every day they would sit down and they would plan their day all day long. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all they would do, Michael. Exactly. And uh, and at some point you've got to stop and say, Okay, I need to implement Yes, what I'm doing and cause you, you feel like you're busy. You're doing busy work. Oh, I'm going to go see this person and this person. And I'm going to make these calls. And then the next day I'm going to make these calls and these calls. and you never actually get out there and do it. Right. So I agree with you a hundred percent on that. Uh, we can get in our own way and we can get stuck in that planning stage to the point that it affects us actually implementing anything that we're planning. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You're putting your heart and soul into something, mm-hmm. and you want to you want it to work. So naturally, in, to me, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to plan out scenario A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. I'm not. It's not yeah. going to stop with A, B, and C, right? Right. You know, if this happens, yeah. You know, or or, or if this happens, or if this happens, not to me. I mean, the the the, the product launch implementation and, and and getting the the ideas together and getting things established. But then you always have the what ifs. Yes. And I hate playing what ifs. Yeah. But, you know, as they say, you know, you you, you, you prepare for the worst and plan for the best. So you want to, I guess that's a problem that I have is I want to, what am I going to do? Yeah. If this or this. And I found out that, you know what, you can't plan for everything. Mm-hmm. It's not always, you know. You know, the best laid plans of mice yeah. and men, so to speak. You, know, you, you you can't 
prepare for everything. And, and, and you know, having spent the time that I did in the businesses that I did and, and, and you know, for lack of a better word, the successes that I had, I thought I knew. Yeah. Really, you know, I thought I knew, hey, I got this, right? Mm-hmm. I learn every day. Every day. Every single day. Whether it be a scenario that occurs directly impacting me or one of the, my customers that I'm going to see and they're encountering a situation mm-hmm. that is foreign to me entirely. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> how are you handling that? You know, yeah. just in case, you know, you know, put that in the, put that in your backpack just in case it comes. So I but, totally yeah. get that. A hundred percent. I I do the, you know, I, I sit down and do this podcast and I always tell people I must feel selfish because I want to sit down and do it because I, I want to learn from these people. And I'm it, look every single day and every single podcast that I do, a business owner will say something and I'm like, wow, that's genius. And I'll put that back there. And I'm just, I, I just, I'm an information seeker. I always have been. And I genuinely am interested in these people. And, and, uh, I like to call it lifelong know. learning. Yes. Yeah, man. You never stop learning and you're never so good that you can't learn. And, and, uh, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Or you're by yourself. One of the two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So obviously referrals and word of mouth would be your best form of advertising, even for the advertising guy, as well as networking. You're a member of the chamber of commerce. You're a fellow graduate of graduate of leadership Livingston. What class were you? That second class. So, oh, wow. Yeah. You, you go back a little way. Yeah, it was 14, I guess it was. I guess the first one had all, had the mayors, and I think Jason Ard was in that one. Yeah. A few other people, you know, to to, re, to launch it. And then I got in the second one, and I will tell you that was impressive. Yeah. And the, and the people that I met that were in that class with me, still. Yeah. To this day, I mean, there's a connection there. Absolutely. Connection. Absolutely. And I was the 2020, the COVID class, as we call it. <laughs> We got messed over in our class with going to a lot of the fun things y'all went and did, but uh, we were virtual a lot of the time. But I'll tell you what, I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. The relationships I made, I would have made no other way. Exactly. And I learned at the end that leading is all about giving back, and that was something I did not know and surprised me and made me a better person coming out of it than I was going into it. It gives you the the reality of, of why we think the thing that I picked up a lot of is why we think what's best for someone else mm-hmm. until you talk to them and find out what they want yeah. and what they think is best for them. You can't make that assumption. And that was something that really came out of that, especially with some of the the scenarios that we went yes. through. I, I can't, uh, we can't really, we can't really expand on what those are. But, right. But, right. Uh, yeah. But I agree a hundred percent with you. And now how important would you say networking has been to your business overall? Just, uh, forming relationships with business owners that then go out and say, Hey, you need to go see my Michael at uh go pages. Let me, let me hook you up. Networking, um, is regardless of what you do is important. Agree. Um, you know, I was always taught that this, the minute you step out your door in the morning, you're selling. Yeah. So you're net, you need to be networking. You need to be in, in, I mean, in reality, what's wrong with meeting as many people as you can meet? Right. And, and, and getting to know them because while you may not need, and I hate to say this as a need perspective, but you may, I mean, they're good people and they're part of the community and they're mm. part of the fabric of this community and what makes it good. Yeah. And so, you know, you, you, you meet people and, and, you know, you may be able to directly help them, mm-hmm. but if you can't directly help them, you may know somebody. That's that exactly can. right. So, yes. you know, it, it's not always a self-centered situation at all. It, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, I have clients to this day. I, I try again, take a consult consultative approach to this. And I have clients that will call me and say, Hey, look, I need swag. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're not a swag guy, but I'm you know, a swag guy. guy, but I know a guy, you know, <laughs> right. Hey, I, you know, I want to do, I'm thinking about doing this digital stuff, this podcast stuff. Like, I know a guy, That's it. you know, so it, and I'm not trying to say I know everything by any stretch of imagination, but if, if I can't provide something for you through my networking and through the people that I've met over the over the, the years, I can say, hey, look, I know somebody that I trust that I've gotten to know well that will take care of you. That's right. And, you know, that's a two-way street. Obviously, I get it. But I like, again, going to the assist and, and 
helping other people develop things. 100%. Now, let me ask you this. What would you consider to be the biggest advantages of using Go Pages versus some other forms of advertising, other than podcasting, of course? How much time do we have? <laughs> um, well, I covered the first with, with just the fact right. that you're getting those coupons back. Right. I mean, uh, you're... The thing... Most advertising mediums have their distinct advantage. Not not all of them, but most of them. Um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and, and 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 say it's better than this because they're better than this because sure. it's better than this because because it, it's each individual opportunity that you're presented with is has a benefit. But does that benefit fit you? Right? Yeah. Does the person that you're talking to are they listening to what you're having to say? Um, is the medium going to reach the maximum amount of people that it can reach? Yeah. Is it going to be something that there's a relative amount of frequency? In other words, are they seeing it regularly? Right. Now, the thing about Go Pages is, is because people keep coming back to it for the restaurants. Yeah. Okay. They may not be looking for a prosthetic leg, but there's an ad in there just under an ad, just under a restaurant. So they're getting the visibility because of the shelf life of that mag of the magazine. Yeah. Tiffany Seacard with Home Key Mortgage combines the experience and knowledge you need to make your mortgage loan a smooth, stress-free process. Reach out to Tiffany for more information on the vast mortgage programs available in the Livingston Parish area. Tiffany Seacard of Home Key Mortgage, a proud sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. Um, the timing, you know, you want to deliver your message to people when they're in a certain frame of mind. You know, if, if you want to, if you're delivering it to them in an entertain, when they're thinking about an entertainment situation, mm -hmm. it's different than if you're delivering it to them when they're thinking about shopping. Agreed. So all of that is part of the secret sauce to what we do. Um, you know, having spent the time in, in, in Yellow Pages and the other marketing marketing fields out there, you know, um, it, you, you, I try and, and we tweaked to make this the best it can be. It can be a standalone advertising program all on its own and yeah. be effective for you. Um, it can be an addition to what you're currently doing. So, um, you know, again, I, I'm not going to say bad things about anybody sure. or any other form. There are a multitude of advantages. And I would love the opportunity to sit down and talk to people about that because it's a one on one conversation. It's a private conversation. Absolutely. And, and it's not a. Not yeah. that I'm going to say anything that I wouldn't say in front of everybody else. Right. But I'm just saying it's a, it's a one-on-one -on -one thing. There you go. So uh, let let Michael sit down with you, kind of cover cover a little bit of more of that with you. But I will say that I like uh, trackable advertising, and, and uh, you can track it. There's no doubt. You can track it much better or aspects of it. So um, right. anyway, that's just yeah, you've my got, opinion. I mean, you'll have people that are going to bring in the offers, and that's great, and that's a measurable medium for you. You're going to have people that are going to come in and they meant to bring it. Right. And they forgot it. Yeah. Um, you're going to have people that have seen the ad a couple of times and they didn't need it at that point in time, but then their washing machine breaks. Yeah. Right. So, you know, but they, and they remember Good because point. of, because of yeah. the impressions that you've made upon them in, in, in your exposures. Uh, the, 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 the analogy that I use a lot of times is, uh, um, you know, you're sitting down, you're watching the Super Bowl, right? And Budweiser spends how many millions? Thirty million yeah. ish, yeah, or more, or more per half on on, <laughs> on their ads, right? You know, so you know, you see the Clydesdale ad or the puppy ad or whichever one they happen to be doing at the time. Are you going to get up right then and go run to the grocery store yeah. and get you a case of Budweiser, twelve pack, or whatever? No, you're right. not going to do that. But you're going to remember it because it it left an impression upon you. Yes, right. So that's how this works too. It's not always just about the volume of redemptions that you're getting or people that bring coupons in. So I just wanted to. No, it's a great point. Great point. Uh, now, in your questionnaire, I love this. In your questionnaire, I ask you to define leader. And you said a leader inspires others through his or her own actions. And as if that wasn't his enough. His or her actions. His or her actions. His or her actions. That's right. <laughs> and if as if that was not enough, you got fancy and quoted Sun Tzu. Correct. <laughs> and you said a leader leads by example, not force. 
Hard right. to argue with the author of The Art of War. <laughs> Absolutely. It, it is actually a great uh, quote. I got, I got tickled because I, I know that quote. I was yeah, there's actually, I think it's a chapter or section in there and the book about leadership. And it's uh, it's amazing how something that was written so long ago yeah. still still applies. Oh, that's a great and I'm not book. saying what we're doing is war, right? but it's psychology. That, boom. You hit the nail on the head. That's exactly right. And uh, and it's a great book. Uh, I recommend it to anyone in business, for sure. Um, how important a role does social media play in your business? I wish they quit changing the algorithms. <laughs> yeah, they're about to change it again. They are. I think Coming. it's August. I think yeah. they're talking about. Um, social media is, I was never going to have Facebook, personally, <laughs> ever. Yeah. I was just going to be that guy, right? Yeah. And, I mean, if I wanted to talk to somebody, I was going to pick up the phone, call them, I was going to go right. see them, knock on the door, and that yeah. kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, with the magazine, it has its own Facebook page. So I had to have an anchor account, which was mine. Mm. And I remember the it was August 13th, 2013, was the first day the magazine started being delivered. And... You know, all of a sudden, my phone just started ping, 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 ping. I have no idea what it was. Yeah. I started looking, and it was likes. And I remember sitting there until way too late that night, just watching (laughs) them, just watching them come. And, and, uh, you know, it's, I'm so impressed at the local um, following that has occurred. Um, I've got one guy in Europe. I don't know where or how he got it. Maybe he was traveling through and saw it and liked it. That's great. But, you know, the the it's a local following, mm. in which fits directly in with the magazine. Yes. And, you know. Which the, is huge. Which is huge. And the interactions that I see. Mm. Um, I posted something yesterday, and it's been picked up and shared, I think it was 44 times as of this morning. Wow. So, That's you know. That's amazing. It, it doesn't always work that way. Yeah. But it's nice when it does. And the more that the consumers can be engaged in it, the better off it is for the business owners. And the ads are all under photos. And you can present them, you know, just download the ad on your phone. Absolutely. And present it to, you know, your restaurant or whatever. And it's 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 good that way too. So but it's um, you know, social media is here to stay. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt about that. Um, although we've seen over the last couple of years, um, especially last year, uh, people got tired of it kind of backed off yeah a little bit but um election years election really, years and you and know they either love it or hate it during that time you know it's interesting depending on who you're voting for it's interesting <laughs> election years are typically a challenge when it comes to advertising yeah yeah because people really don't, people don't have an answer there, there's an there's an unknown there staring them in the face right yeah. come november right or it's typically for those for the presidential elections, and they sure. tend to. And, and you can look at the, the consumer confidence numbers and, and and so forth, and you can see a a, a pullback, mm-hmm. just ever so slightly. That's interesting. But what's really cool about that is once the answer is given, whether mm-hmm. you are pro or for the answer, yeah, it's like there's this pent up need to spend, yeah, and it and it's coming, yeah. So you know, it's it's like okay. We know it's coming, and it's coming, and the same thing's happening with COVID. Interesting. Yeah. Very, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you 100% on that. Now, you got a promo going on right now we want to talk about. Absolutely. So tell us about your back-to-school <laughs> special. Okay, well, um, they did push back-to-school back a week this year, which is great for everybody. But uh, what we're going to do for between now and the end of July, uh, my magazine for July 7th, which is the next drop, is mm-hmm. full. Um but I'm looking at an expansion for the next one, for the one that's going to be in late August. So yeah. uh, between you know now and um, July 31st, between now and July 31st, if we you know when we sit down, um, if I have an opportunity to sit down with you and we come to an arrangement on your advertising, um, I'll do a you know if you agree to appear in six editions, I will give you the seventh one free. Now that's going to carry you through. Ooh, that's going to carry you through the month of April into May on advertising there you go through through this medium perfect yeah. perfect so look for that that's a great deal uh indeed uh and us as business owners appreciate that absolutely uh, absolutely it gets you through the holidays you know christmas and it's already set you don't have to worry about it and it's 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 done for you excellent excellent so i can't uh impress enough to 
to folks the to check out go pages i am uh of course our envision podcast studio rental side of what we do at local leaders of the podcast uh we're in that magazine so check that out and then come in here and and uh start a podcast absolutely give me that coupon back (laughs) uh we'd love to do that we got some good deals in that magazine for you um fun facts we did some fun facts this is my favorite part of the show because you kind of learn a little bit about somebody on on the other side away from their business so i asked you a few questions and i'm gonna cover your answers to those i asked you if you ever purchased a yacht what would you name it and this was a great name you said seize the day but it was spelled s-e-a-s correct love that that's awesome uh your dream job when you were 12 major league baseball player absolutely what happened? Um, Couldn't hit enough home runs. No, that wasn't the issue at all. Uh, actually, I was I played, you know, into high school. Um, was looking at a number of options after high school, yeah. and uh, ended up having uh, two scopes and a lateral release. Oh yeah, and uh, that pretty much you. pretty much toasted that. So yeah, I always tell people mine was a football player. Uh, and I never grew after the age of like 17 as far as height. <laughs> and I need to be about 6'3 for my yep. position. Yep. So there went that. Uh, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? You said clone yourself. You might could do that now, Michael. They got some pretty pretty interesting uh, yeah, science going on these days. Yeah. Be two um, go pages running around. <laughs> Yeah, that would I think that's everybody's wish. Yeah, is to be to be able to do that. For <laughs> that sure. would be cool. Uh, if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you go? You said the Holy Land, absolutely Jer- Jerusalem. Yep, and I pronounced it right. I used to say Jerusalem. <laughs> now Jerusalem. Yeah, my mom went uh, a couple times and uh, and told me you know what she experienced when she was there, and yeah. um, it would be uh, given my faith. It would be, I think that would be the ultimate trip. I think uh, it would think be it would too. Be. I wish I could say as a parting gift, we have a trip to Jerusalem. That would be fantastic. <laughs> but we do not. <laughs> <laughs> so um, thanks for coming on today, man. Oh, I, man I, I enjoyed it. Uh, Love talking to you about business and especially your business. Uh, for all those people that will watch this and want more information, uh, shout out your Facebook page. Um, it is Go Pages Denim Springs Walt, Watson and Walker. There you go. So give them a like on there. And do you have a website? Absolutely. Uh, www.gopageslouisiana.com. I tried to make it as long as possible. And it, yeah. It, 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 <laughs> but you can actually, on the website, um, it talks about, there's actually a digital version of the magazine in the event you lose one. Um, you can go in there and see it and, and flip through page by page. Awesome. There's a lot of other information on there as well. Well, and what I'll do is I'll link all of that to the description of this video. Absolutely. And so that'll make it easy for folks. They ain't got to type all that out. And I'll also put a, uh, I'll put your ad up that you're running right now and it'll just pop up while we're talking like magic. (laughs) Uh, I want to thank everyone out there for viewing and and listening to Local Leaders of Podcast. Please continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share it on all our social media platforms as we strive to shine a spotlight on all local businesses, nonprofits, and business leaders all over the Livingston Parish and surrounding areas. Uh, I want to mention Mighty Mom. Speaking of nonprofits, uh, Michael, uh, they they are doing a business sponsorship for 21 2021 and 2022 they're getting ready ready for the full tummy project uh for a thousand bucks a week your business will get social media recognition for your week and you will have your business logo and link to the website under the tab uh for business sponsors on the mighty moms website if if you can commit before august 1st they're even going to put your business's logo on some t-shirts that the teachers all wear throughout the Livingston Parish community during the week of September 6th. Uh, Mighty Moms has given over $1 million of food to children of Livingston Parish. These are hungry children, right? So uh, since they started in 2010, and they're 100% private funded, they don't don't have public funds. So if you're interested in doing that, I'll put their link also in the description of this video. You can click uh, and shoot them a message on their Facebook and they'll get back with you and give you further information. But we like to mention Mighty Moms when we can. What a great charity. Very no nice one, so. no child should ever be hungry. Nope. You're hungry, come to my house. I'll feed you. <laughs> exactly. No doubt about it. Make but support these, rice, we got it. Support these Mighty Moms. They're good people. So I want to shout that out and definitely mention that. And finally, 
If I can get to my other paper here, I want to thank all our sponsors, including Trisha Johnston Realtor, BJ Pond, Big Mike Sports Bar and Grill, Sport and Center, Black Sheep Creative, SR Enterprise Painting, William Waldrop of TWFG Insurance. We could not do any of this without all of you. And until next time, I am Jim Chapman reminding you to love your community, support local business like Go Pages, and keep leading. Thanks, Michael. I appreciate you. My pleasure. Black Sheep Creative understands the importance of digital marketing and your return on your investment. It's their aim to provide professional web and graphic design services at a price point that smaller businesses and startups can afford. Get in touch with them on the web at blacksheepcreative.com.